with a little bonus for the digital hair tutorial. And I'm basically showing you how hair can be drawn. There's several different ways. You find one that fits your liking and you go for it. But for this one in particular, people have asked me how to draw braids, um, straight hair, curly hair, colored hair, monochromatic hair, things like that. So I'll show you those uh, here. And hopefully I can give you a good experience. Because <laughs> this is quite a hard topic for me to talk about since I'm not really, I'm not formally trained. I have no training in my background whatsoever. I just kind of do what I feel is necessary for my art pieces and I learn along the way majority of the time. And I wouldn't necessarily say I'm very good at braids but people seem to say different. Okay so I'm just taking a brush that I have. It's a chalk brush. This one right here. Number 44. If you have Photoshop. And this also works traditionally too. And I would take a, I would make a design. Like she has her braid here. It's more like a twist and then it kind of goes into a braid. It's very loose. So I picture, I like, not picture, but I kind of like section off certain areas I want to draw. But for right now, I'm going to focus on this end piece right here since this seems to be the biggest issue most people have. And I think of it as like upside down hearts. Very curved upside down hearts. So I would make an outline like this. And you just kind of keep it going like that. And in Photoshop, you can copy and paste what you already have, but I'm going to just quickly draw out the outline since it's not that difficult. And you see I'm just kind of dragging it in, making more hearts, kind of following this pattern here. I would recommend staring at some um, reference pictures. But yes, this is how I do it. I just basically make a little outline, especially for things I'm not used to drawing. We usually get smaller down in here, so I'll make smaller ones, smaller ones, smaller hearts equals smaller braid sections. And I would just keep doing that until I find it necessary to just oh look I have a little hair tie and then little hair pieces and then you can see the different strands so far so I would go through and I would make strands in it this is just basic sketching almost like and then I would like kind of like drag this line in like that so that it looks more like a braid and shade it the way I want to and so forth. It's not that difficult, it's very simple. And yeah. You basically are just trying to mimic what you see. Loose hairs and so forth. Yeah, and then that's basically how I would draw a braid. And I have several different brushes. Right now I drew with the chalk brush, but when I do draw hair, I usually use this one right here, which is a pre-construed brush. It's already in Photoshop. And I, um, it's this one right here, right there. And the focal point, it looks like this, where you draw hair and so forth, but I shrink it down. Because there I am, whimsical. And I would take it and I would just kind of like I'd shrink it down as small as I wanted it to be. And I would make loose hairs and kind of make it look more like her strands here. Do this. I just keep doing it until I feel like I'm liking what I'm seeing. And then a braid, you're overlapping here and so forth. Like that, yeah. Just keep doing it to both sides of the, the braid. 
upgrade. I kind of like these strands. Finishing off the brave with extra loose hairs and detailing. Swift movements, like when you watch raindrops fall into a puddle. And that's pretty much it to a braid. You once you want to render your hair, you can paint over that with a uh, multiply layer and um, fill it in. But this is a basic sketch I use when I'm trying to do such things. to blonde hair or light colored hair. This one is asked a lot since a lot of people have a problem doing this one versus black hair. And I'm basically making a base with uh, a chalk brush but I believe later on I switched to an airbrush which you will see here shortly. This is a quicker way to do it if you want to make a more comical view or a quick sketch. Since the opacity um, gives way, yeah, I just I'm using the airbrush right now to make the base. But I used the base in black at, at the beginning before um, having a clip layer on top of this layer and filling it in with the base color of his um, his roots, which are kind of a sandy brown color. I'm showing the brushes at the moment and I picked this one over here which you can find in the bundled ABR file. And I'm quickly changing the um, the base. Sorry for the random lag. And with lighter hair, you use a darker base so you can build on top of it. Now I'm picking away at the highlights of his hair or where the light is directly hitting it and finding colors that seem to be close to it. And using the brush I have before this one right here. I'm casually making swooping strokes within the base to give off hair strands. And I just continue doing the same thing over and over again until I feel like my base is completely covered in some way or other. Now I'm finding highlights, another highlight, one that's closer to the light source so it's going to be paler. Doing the same thing as I did before with swooping brush strokes. that the light would actually catch. This is another color palette trying to find a higher or cooler highlight for where the light. 
light is directly hitting the hair. And doing the same thing where the light actually hits the hair directly. This just gives the hair dimension or three dimen three dimensions, 40 as well. Actually making loose strands make it look like uh, the wind caught it. Flyaways or cowlicks if you rather. I'm making them. I'm giving it a little bit of color so that it doesn't look too bland. Because even the palest hair has a bit of a warmer color to it. I'm adding that gently to certain areas where they come from the dark roots and so forth. And now I'm taking the eraser and cleaning up the outside where the airbrush is clearly seen. I'm taking the airbrush on 50% opacity and erasing around the edges in the same swooping actions that I did to draw the hair. drawing a diagram describing circling areas to give you a, a basic outline of how to go about such a thing. And for this hair um, type, there is no overlay, soft light, any kind of layer changes. It's all just a uh, simple color of the base and so forth, opacity generations, things like that. Now we're moving on to dark hair or colored hair. Once again, using the airbrush to make a base, following along the color of his hair, and you can find this also on eyebrows. And with darker hair, you use a lighter base, so you can layer on top of it. I'm just casually reminding you that darker hair equals a lighter base.
But I'm showing you that I'm picking the first shade of the darker hair, especially in his eyebrow and along his sideburns and his roots in a darker color along the thing to show you that his underlying color is dark and it's fading into a lighter color. And I'm just doing swooping brush strokes just like I did with the lighter hair before. And basically do the same thing just with a few more highlights and a few more shadows than lighter hair. So his darker hair has more dimension. I'm giving the hair movement by causing a hill-like movement in it. I'm finding another dark color, a color that's darker than what I just did to define the dip in the hair or the shadow where the place is a little bit farther from light. I'm swooping in the direction I want the hair to go, which is downwards. And a little up into the lighter brown. Once again for dimension. to the highlights and he has about three or four in his hair so I'm using a kind of orangey brown color that's a little bit less saturated to give you more of a highlight. So I'm doing the same thing in areas that needed more highlight which are closer to the light source. Actually sweeping it out where the hair came over the tension and uh, is giving away. Now I'm using the second highlight, which is more of a reddish orange. And I'm not color picking, but I'm trying to make colors that look similar to what he has in his hair, which is usually where people get stumped the most because they do not. Um, you know, the hair is actually made up of a bundle of colors. And I try to use two, and it doesn't work, and you get frustrated. So, I'm here to tell you that it has a bunch of colors, and I would recommend you take time to study it. So, we're using a, a semi dark color, but I'm making it brighter. The warmer color. And I'm just stroking this in lightly. And also get a bit of a yellowish tinge by his forehead, probably caused from light. So I took advantage of it and made it more of an orangey color to give a highlight of said light source. Which is closer to the front of the hair where it's where I'm drawing it. And not so much farther away. Giving your hair a light source is very important because it helps define the other colors. If you have a very warm light source, you usually have a really cold hair color. If you have a cold light source, which is usually all the time, you um, have a little bit of a semi-warm gradiate gradation of um, shadows. I'm just kind of sweeping it through, giving loose hairs and things like that, so it makes the hair look like it's flowing. And I'm making the part of the hair that's farther away and closer to the light a little bit more brighter. Loose hairs and so forth. And believe me now, I am making. 
making a um, overlay layer. And I'm going to color pick from the hair I have drawn using first the base color to create more depth and more shadow gradients with an airbrush. On, I believe, at least 58% opacity. This usually occurs where the light does not touch the hair. We did the same thing with the highlight color and a few mid tones. Picking up the same brush I used to create the, br the hair follicles and strands and so forth, and then going to eventually go back through and uh, define the loose hairs. Now I'm just defining the hair a little bit more, more movement, more loose hair follicles. Seems like this part is optional. This brush, however, is not included in the pack, but is already installed in Photoshop. Changing brush again, and once again, this part is actually very optional. Making more loose strands in the hair, depending on if you grab the highlight color or the midtone color, you want to make them loose and free and not look like they're broken off and um, damaged. You want the hair to look healthy. A good idea is to study hair growth and what healthy hair looks like and what damaged hair looks like and really understand how that affects how you draw hair and so forth. And then you're done. The last hair was more of a curly hair topic. I not usually draw curls. But I figured it shouldn't be any harder than the loose um, hairs that I draw on fringes and so forth. The things you learn from the hair prior to this and uh, the light colored hair is no different than coloring hair that's pink or blue. You just find the same colors in the gradation of such. I'm doing curly hair similar to how I drew the braid in the very beginning. 
we basically make an outline of um, the direction the curls are going. These are really rough sketches and I'm not very um, good at drawing curly hair. I don't really do this on a regular basis and it's not going to be any different than the braid. for things like this is thinking about um, whipping cream or ice cream in general. I think curly hair can be drawn like this. It can be rendered like this or like the hair prior to this. And you can also just individually draw each strand of curly hair, making your brush bigger or smaller, textured or not textured. Right now I'm just filling in the shadows of the hair and so forth. This is very monochromatic because I didn't feel like um, rendering curly hair would do any justice or help. Once again, you do it just like the braid and you combine it with the coloring method of the light haired color or the dark haired hair. Finding a mid tone, and I used, I believe later on, I used white as the highlight area. curly hair the method is to find where the light hits it directly and apply a bunch of highlights and then where the hair is not exposed to light you um, apply shadows. It's a test of light is to darkest and so forth. You can find the volume and uh, create more dimension where there's more volume. Pretty much done. 